Hey guys. I decided to come on a few minutes early because we are losing light faster than anything. So, um, swing this around so you guys can see a little bit more of what's going on behind me besides the restrooms and let's swing it this way I'm in a campsite probably not supposed to be here because I'm not paying to be in the campsite but but I'm here thanks for hopping on just wait a few minutes for everyone who's hoping to get here to get here. So it's um, 5 p.m. Mountain Time. So the sun sets at about 5.45. Well, I don't wanna say it sets, but it's pretty darn close. Um, <clears throat> so probably won't be going as long tonight as I have been the last two weeks because uh, I'm gonna run out of light, but uh, I hope to chat a little bit and then uh, do a little painting demo for you. So I'm um, just going to wait a few seconds, few minutes here for anyone else who wants to hop on the start. Um, I know there might have been a, some confusion with the, the time difference, so I apologize for that. I'm going to tip you guys up a little bit so you can see what's just above my head because that's a lot more interesting than than me. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm still here. <laughs> so yeah, isn't that incredible? So good. So good. Can you guys let me know? Can someone just let me know if you can hear me? That would be awesome. <clears throat> and also how um, the transmission is and how, is that the right word? <laughs> I don't know. And I'm talking a little quieter because I'm in kind of a public space and there's folks around me having their dinner outside here. So I don't want to be disruptive. Um, but just if you could, somebody could let me know if you can hear me, um, and how the connection is. Hi, all is good. Yay. Thanks, Gloria. Awesome. <clears throat> I've been driving around for the last hour trying to figure out Hi from Florida, can hear you and see you fine. Awesome, thank you, Susan. Trying to figure out where to do this because in National Park, the internet is just elusive. So I've been driving around, chasing the bars. Hi! <laughs> so I found, I think I found a great spot for us. So obviously I'm not deep into the park because there just would be no option of broadcasting live. So I am in kind of the, within the first like half mile of the park here from Houston oh I'm so glad it's coming through so good that's awesome yay for National Park Internet Service woohoo okay so um, let me sit back a little bit okay so um, yeah hi Raina <laughs> so I am in Zion National Park um, you guys have probably heard me talk a lot about Zion or most more importantly or more often um, and there's going to be people just walking by and that we're just going to feel that that's actually a car so yeah hi hi oh I'm good sorry I couldn't hear you this is not a picnic area here this is the campground okay great I'm broadcasting live <laughs> Okay. Okay. I can't really stop in the middle of it. I'm going to be painting. <laughs> yeah. Painting. And you're broadcasting it on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't want anybody coming in here thinking they can pick me in here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Can I shoo them away if they come in? They've been there for like an hour, so I don't think they're going anywhere. They're fine. 
Yeah. They've got their own table and stuff. I just don't want people in the campground. Campground's closed. Right. Okay. Could I have like 20 minutes and if people start coming, I'll just run away. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. <clears throat> There you go. So, um, so okay, we didn't get shut down. That's great. Campground's closed. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like seriously like 10 feet from the, yeah, keeping it real is for sure, from the campground slash parking lot border. But, you know, he had to tell me what's what. Um, anyway, I get a little sassy when people tell me I can't do things. Um, so, forgive me. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I'm here in Zion. Uh, my husband and I have been coming here for, I think about 15 years. Um, we, on our honeymoon, we traveled out west, did like a three week, um, you know, had no money, drive everywhere and eat hot dogs from the gas station type of situation. And we didn't find Zion that time, but we found Zion the next time we did the cross country thing. And um, at that point, you know, it was 15 years ago. And it is a very different park from what it is today. You know, it seems like the world has found Zion. Um, and so, but we still love it. It's still part of our hearts and our souls. And so we come here at least twice a year, um, often more. It's definitely been more this year. So um, anyway, uh, I just wanted to broadcast live from, from where I'm at. And uh, yeah, and I'm gonna do some painting. I'm actually not gonna do a landscape tonight. I was going to do some floral composition work. And it's something that you guys have asked me about a lot, how to come up with a composition, how to arrange things, how to choose your subject matter, and so on and so forth. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to be here next week as well so hopefully I'll broadcast from there uh, from here as well next week um, and uh, maybe not do it in the campground so I don't get kicked out of here or an attempted kick out anyway <laughs> can everybody still hear me okay I see a couple people dropped off so I just want to make sure um, we're not losing connectivity um, everybody hear me okay anybody anybody I'm gonna get started painting soon, unless you guys have any. Okay, great. Who was on last? <laughs> yes, good, loud and clear. Okay, awesome. Okay, well then there's a lot more people here than the little symbol thingy tells me. Anyway, awesome. So anybody have any questions, just random? It could be about Zion, it could be about anything. I don't care before I flip the screen and start painting and I won't be able to see your comments. So anybody at all have anything they want to ask me, um, go for it. Um, if you're just hopping on, I'm Christy Rice. If you're new um, to my channel, uh, I just started doing live broadcasts two weeks ago. And so I am uh, thank thankfully from my friend Raina, trying to be super consistent with them and come on every week for you guys. So uh, this week I am on a uh, working vacation in Zion National Park. Where is Raina? <laughs> Raina's watching from Pennsylvania and she's commenting too, if you couldn't see that. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm probably gonna go ahead and get started painting. The light is is um, fading fast so I'm gonna get on that so what I'm gonna work on today um, as I've been walking around the park and experiencing the park the last few days you know it's the fall uh, leaves are falling off the trees hey um, so you know there's not really anything that's in kind of uh, that I can tell that's in like an active growth phase in terms of flowers but uh, we have yucca yucca is incredible it's not blooming of course but um, you know, the spires are still all around. Um, we have sagebrush, which right now kind of looks, I believe it's sage, sagebrush. Hi from Sweden, yay, thanks for coming on. Um, which is beautiful and yellow right now. Um, and then we have all of these amazing cottonwood trees all around the park and all the leaves are falling and the leaves, they actually look like watercolor. So I'm gonna do a composition with yucca, sagebrush, um, maybe some cactus, cause they're always here and they're always fairly green. Um, and some leaves. So uh, as I do this, I'm gonna to talk to you about composition and, 
and how to think about composition and how also at the same time to not freak out or fret over composition and quote getting it right uh, you guys all know how i feel about the rules in painting uh, the rules are necessary to a point i think we should all learn basic techniques basic rules but then i think we should be willing to throw them out the door and just have a blast and have a good time um, so I'm going to bear with me. I'm going to flip the camera around and it's going to be again, like a tornado hit. Um, but we'll deal. Okay, here we go. You can see a little something there. Adjusting the tripod. So bear with me. Oh, you're looking at the sky. Fabulous. Almost there, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. Yeah, we is right. Crazy town. Okay, how's that look? I wanted to get a little closer for you guys this week. And as a matter of fact, I can see your comments with this angle that I'm using tonight. So feel free to ask questions as I'm painting. And I will do my best to pay attention and answer them. But let's get a move on because we're losing our light. All right. So I'm going to start. If you guys are familiar with yucca, they're kind of the long spires. And they just look like big pointy leaves. Um, I'm not going to sketch tonight. I'm going right in. I'm grabbing a green with whatever's on my palette. I'm thinking about my whole page here. Um, and you can really, the, the shape of the screen really is mimicking um, the the orientation of my paper so um, when I'm thinking about where to start how to start what element to place where I'm thinking about balance I'm thinking about odd numbers you've heard me say it before so I'm not going to put that yucca because it's a strong visual element um, strong shapes I'm not going to put it right in the middle I'm going to start over here off to the side and I'm going to, I'm using the dagger brush guys. Um, and I'm just going to start making a long skinny, um, I don't know what they're called. Are they called spires? Gosh, I don't know. I feel like I should know this. I'm kind of sketching. I'm kind of not I'm using the broad side of my brush to fill in. I'm using the point to kind of sketch in some linear details but I'm just getting something down on the page. I think my yucca, I want to be pretty large in terms of the composition. Um, I kind of like how the linear quality as I started working on this. I'm gonna take this um, tripod up just a little bit. I want you to be able to see more of, of this, this whole scene here. Perfect. Okay. So I kind of like the linear quality of the yucca. So I'm going to keep going with that effect. And again, I'm not worrying too much about it being central. I'm also not worrying too much of too much about it being central. I'm also not worrying too much about it being complete. A yucca plant kind of looks like a bunch of a bunch of swor a swords in like a bush type of shape. Um, but I'm gonna come in here with now um, a, a little pad from a cactus, from a cactus, because I, because I don't want to feel like I have to continue adding those sword-like shapes. Still using that dag brush I'm using the broadside and a good amount of pressure so that I can get coverage pretty quickly 
I did a good amount of pressure so that I can get coverage pretty quickly. Um, it, um, it's very dry out here, so I always there's always an adjustment period for me when I come out here and paint um, some more intense green into the wet areas. Always an adjustment period to remember. Oh, ding ding ding. <laughs> areas. Always an adjustment period to remember. Oh, ding ding ding. <laughs> you are, um, you know, in an arid area now compared to sunny Pennsylvania, wink, wink. So I really have to account for that um, quickness of the dry time really speeds up. I'm going Because I'm going so large with the yucca, things are looking a little more abstract. I'm okay with that. I'm also letting things run into one another. I want to define this this pad of the cactus a bit more so I'm just taking some dark color off of my palette this one's a little more blue but I like it and I am feeling that kind of asymmetrical vibe I'm just going onto the dry page here adding another cactus pad my paper is, I believe it's an 11 by 14, which is a little bigger than I typically work. I believe it's an 11 by 14, which is a little bigger than I typically work. Um, so I'm really having to take full effect of uh, this broad side of the brush here and really press down so it fans out like that. Uh, otherwise, this is going to dry way too quick on me. A little unexpected color here. Clean water to kind of blend it out. Okay. I'm just literally walking you through this painting. Look at you go. Haha, <laughs> thanks. Um loving, I'll be honest, I'm not loving the yucca. I'm already thinking, gosh, I would wish I would have done something a little different with them. But at the same time, ruin my painting experience. I'm gonna keep going and see where it takes me. I'm using a little bit, of, I'm using my Schmenka palette. Um, it's spelled, I don't know if anybody could spell that for me and put it up on the screen. It's S-C-H-M-I-N-C-K-E. Somebody could put that up so you guys can see that. Not only are we losing our light, but dang, it's cold. So anyway, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not going to let the fact that I'm like not loving these first yuck marks that I laid down um, really affect me. Um, I want to keep going. I want to be, I want to get to a place where I can at least feel good about something about this. Um, and, and I'll get there. This is something I love to do is mixing, you know, broad brush strokes of color um, with, you know, washes. Oh, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> linear brush strokes of color with washes. I love that kind of juxtaposition. So these are the linear right here, and these are the broad. I'm gonna go in with some more linear over here. Cool. Gonna define this edge even more. It keeps getting lost into that part of the yucca, which is not a horrible thing, but I just wanna keep an eye on it. Here we go. I've just grabbed the kind of the most intense green. Schmenka, thank you. Um, let's see about. I might break my own rule tonight. I usually don't go off the edge of the page too much. I don't need to yet. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't keep building out these kind of abstracted yucca starting to feel it a little bit more <coughs> hello thanks for hopping on add another pad over here maybe keep that linear I'm gonna wash back some of this color that keeps creeping out got clean water and I'm blotting if you can see here I'm pushing back 
blotting, pushing back, blotting. And I'm scooping up that color that keeps just creeping into my yucca from the cactus. I just wanna get a little bit more control. So I'm just using a clean, dry brush and scooping up. I think we talked about this last week, scooping up some of that here to get things a little more under control. There we go. Something I do all the time. I'm not much of a blotter directly on the page. I've mentioned that. I'm much more of a, a scooper. All right, let's get some unexpected color in here. Zion this time of year is extremely yellow in terms of the um, flora, let's say, that is around. Um, so I tend to exaggerate anything that is not yellow this time of year. Let's get a little bit more going in that pad. And guys, if I'm calling this the wrong thing, you can certainly tell me. I feel like I have done cactus before and I've called them the wrong thing and somebody corrected me, but of course I can't remember. Um, what the actual name was. So I keep calling them cactus pads. But you, you know what I mean, big fleshy parts of a cactus. And let's tame this back a little bit more. Has anybody received their Art for Joystick journal? Have you been painting in it? I'd love to hear if you have any questions about it. Hey, thanks for hopping on. Doing a kind of oversized, um, slightly abstracted um, floral composition um, based on what is still kind of here and beautiful in Zion National Park. If you're just hopping in, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, I'm too high up on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead in here and start adding in suggestions of um, sagebrush. using the short edge of my brush, but not the tip. Now I'm using the tip. I was telling everyone, like, I'm not too thrilled about the compositional decision I made here at the very start, um, but I'm resisting the urge to kind of just want to scrap the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> So I'm, I'm going with it and I'm gonna do some more yucca over here. And there I go, I'm breaking my own rule, what rules were made to be broken, right? Going off the edge of the page. Because this composition needs it. So in terms of composition, I have this kind of strong visual area here off center. I have three cactus pads. I like to work in um, odd numbers for composition. I'm also something composition wise is I'm working with different um, techniques in terms of how I'm creating my lines and my brush strokes. I've got some linear elements here and here, and then some actual big washy elements here and here. Um, there's some really cool stuff happening because everything's drying so quickly. If you're just hopping on, guys, I am broadcasting live and also breaking another one of my rules uh, from Zion National Park. Talking about composition, floral composition. I will be here for another two weeks, so I will be broadcasting again next week, and I think then we will do a landscape for a change. All right, let's raise this up even more so you can you guys can get a real feel for the full scene. You're going on a ride, bear with me. And if you are just coming in, you missed the drama of when I first began. I almost got kicked out of the 
campground here. So, but I pleaded and he let me stay. Adding some unexpected sheer red there, just some dots. Happy to answer any questions and please don't hold back if you're like Christy Rice what are you doing tonight um, I will not be offended and I'm happy to answer that question okay I'm not loving this keeping it real I'm gonna go ahead and add um, another cactus pad right over top her aggressive with color aggressive with speed and aggressive with the pressure on my brush I need something to make a statement I need something here to make me love this painting again and that might have just done the trick I'm gonna go here and also paint right over top of some of these yuccas that I'm not wholly in love with I'm gonna be aggressive with my paint choice again the thickness of the paint pressure in my brush stroke and just make strong deliberate choice to change this composition quickly <clears throat> yes that that really for me made a difference and I am feeling that that change loving that I was mentioning before if you just hop on we're losing our light quickly tonight next week I will go on um, probably at least a half an hour earlier at least 4 p.m. mountain time because this light is crazy here in the canyon it's almost gone all right I'll get some more sagebrush in there I'm just using golden tones of all different kinds I'm using the short edge of the brush so right here here and I'm just adding in some curious little dabbing type marks I'm really glad that this composition happened tonight I'm really glad that this composition is not one that I'm like over the moon about because I like the fact that we can talk about what happens in your brain when you do I'm not it's not so much the composition that's bothering me I think um, it's I'm working with a difficult subject matter these these yucca spires and and I'm not you know in a good place about them yet but I think it's important for us to talk about what can happen in the space of your brain <clears throat> when you are beginning a painting and then quickly you realize you've put something down that you're wholly not in love with what you know what do you do what do you what is your next step do you keep going do you try to quote unquote save it um <clears throat> how do you feel about it anybody you want to chime in um i'd love to hear from you what you do um and there's no right answer to be quite honest there's no right answer to this question what you do when early in a painting you feel like you've had that kind of oh crap moment where you just do something that is really hard to reverse and um just want to make sure this is in focus <coughs> so what you do um i'm i'm showing you what i do i try to keep going i try to find moments in the painting that i'm really in love with and work off of those honestly that moment right there is something i really love and i'd like to see more of that happen um i tend to, when i'm working on something and I'm not really excited about it I tend to go pretty bold and get pretty adventurous with what I'm doing um, and I'm gonna start doing some more of that now um, let's move this camera a little bit I'm gonna go up in here and put in some more cactus pads for me boldness is usually a great redeemer in a lackluster painting experience going bold doing things that you might otherwise be afraid to do um, to quote-unquote potentially ruin a painting 
that you love, that you're working on and that you're excited about. Um, I've had some of the most beautiful and inspiring happy accidents on paintings like this one where I'm struggling and I'm feeling um, uninspired. Sometimes my boldness and really incredible results. So when I'm struggling, I go bold. There we go. How's the light here, guys? Are you still able to see this well? Is this still worth a broadcast? I'm not sure how the lack of light is kind of um, coming across on your screens, but um, just say the word if you're having trouble seeing this. I'm gonna add in some of the Always, always makes me feel better about life. A well-placed cactus spine. And or all of the above and their color. And these exaggerating their color. and their sheer number. I'm definitely adding more than exists. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna do a whole cluster of the sagebrush down here, really get some interesting textures going. These are kind of as if they were behind the yucca. I'm just grabbing golden, like ochres and yellows from my palette. I'm grabbing it right from, I did not see that comment. I'm sorry if you want to put it up again. I'm, I'm uh, grabbing right from the little pans of watercolor. So again, back to the composition question. Um, we talk about balance. We talk about symmetry or asymmetry and and keeping the eye moving around the page now down here i have one two three four five pads up here i have two so but these aren't bothering me just having two up here isn't bothering me yet but it may start to bother me who knows <clears throat> down here i'm just going in with the sagebrush effect with the short edge of my brush, not the tip of the brush. Again, I'm using the quarter inch dagger from Royal and Langnickel. Um, the one I use all the time. And I'm using the short edge, not the point. All right. Um, everything here has been more like color bursts and quote unquote smooth compared to the sagebrush here. So the other thing about composition is thinking about contrasting textures, smooth, textural, um, linear, washy. Um, so I really like to play around with, with contrasts. Sorry about that, guys. Anyone tell me, can you hear me? Can you see me? We lost connection there briefly. I'm still adding a whole bunch of texture. In this bottom corner here. I'm fearing that our connection is um, not the best because I don't see many comments coming through and I think we might be losing speed here, guys. So let me get this in view. Hopefully this will come through. 
do a couple more things for you and then I'm probably gonna sign off and start doing my research for next week for a better spot um, I thought this was a winner but I don't know I'm not sure Whoop. happy accident I kind of like that I changed the color up on these spines into a really beautiful rich Mm, it's very blurry. Yeah, I don't think we have a good connection, guys. So I am going to sign off and um, we will, I will be sure to find a better connection for next week. Um, but thank you guys for trying to stay with me and putting up with the poor connection. This is working, so tell them about Aunt Sue. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I'm bummed. I had three bars here. I really thought it was going to be enough. But <clears throat> what I'm going to go ahead and do is work on this a little bit more. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and post an image on um, the Christy the Painter Instagram account so you can kind of see where I went with this. Um, and if I, you know, I might also is uh, go ahead and do... Um, and Instagram stories. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you guys. No bummer. <laughs> well, thanks for following along. Um, watch out for the announcement for next week. Um, and thank you so much for hopping on. Take care.